down Scott Brown here. I renovate houses for a living and there's obvious tools that you need to renovate houses but this video is seven must-have tools that you might have missed. So they're the kind of tools that are maybe overlooked or unexpected but I think are very important. So we're back in level four here in New Zealand which means you can only go out for essential items and exercise. Now what is essential to me is that this van still works. So I'm taking the van for a little drive just to make sure it isn't all seized up by the time I can go back to work. And uh, speaking of work, Squarespace is paying my bills right now, so this video is brought to you by Squarespace. They are a platform that helps you build your website, and we'll talk more about that in the middle of the episode. So number one on my list of uh, renovation tools that I use all the time, and I think everyone should have if they're gonna renovate a house, is a right angle, drill bit. So if by any chance you do not know what this is, it's basically a bit that allows you to get into areas that you otherwise couldn't get into. You put it into your drill like so, and then when you pull the trigger, that spins. So if I wanted to put a screw under here for some ungodly reason, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it, even with an impact driver, which is pretty small. But as soon as I pop on the right angle drill bit, put that in there like that, Wow. So it also has this little handle here. You press the button, pull it out. It gives you something to hold on to, so it won't go like that. But I just tend to hold it by the drill bit itself. And that kind of works. I don't even know what brand this tool is. Um, I honestly can't even find a logo. I'll just pick a generic one and put that in the link below. Um, I'll put a link for all these tools. It's one of those tools that even if you only use once on your renovation project, you'll be thankful that you got it because it solves those problems that only a tool like this can solve. One thing to point out though, I don't think this is impact rated. If you put it in the impact drill, the impact drill could damage the mechanism inside here. I think that's what happened to my, my old one. It lasted three years before that happened, but just a little warning. The second tool on the seven tool list gives me a chance to show off my new drawer. Wow. So my second tool on my list of tools for home renovations is this paint scraper. Now I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but trust me, this thing will save your life on a home renovation. Especially when you've got a sharp razor blade on it. On the last couple of villas and bungalows that we renovated, we had to reuse a lot of weatherboards, floorboards, skirtings, and jobs like that, they tend to have like seven layers of paint on all the timbers. And rather than sitting there and sanding all day and creating fine particle dust that you could then breathe in, do the bulk of it with this. Sometimes do all of it with this and then you just finish it off with the sander to smooth it out. This thing surprised me, it takes off paint surprisingly well, and if you use it correctly, you don't even damage the timber when you do so. So, trust me when I say this is a critical tool for doing home renovations. If you've got an old timber house, you should have one of these. Now this next tool I don't have with me because it's in my storage container. My storage container isn't accessible because of level four. So I've drawn the next tool. Tool number three, moisture reader. Basically all timber has a bit of moisture in it. After you've framed up the house and before you put the wall lining on the inside, that moisture level needs to be a certain percentage. It needs to be dried out somewhat. Those two things there are prongs and they stab into the timber and then on that screen, there's a moisture percentage. When council do pre-line inspections, one of the key areas they fail you is in moisture, moisture levels in your timber. So it pays to have a good idea of the moisture content before the inspector comes. And I'll, I'll delay inspections if my reader's telling me that it's over 18%. That heater's been on, that dehumidifier's been on, and, and we've got a bigger heater that's been on all weekend. Based on my preliminary readings, at a surface level, we're at 16. So this afternoon, we'll see whether the inspector's reading is similar to our reading. 
So if you own a house or if you're renovating a house, um, that, that'll apply to you when you're putting in new framing. Your old timber is probably dry as anything. It's probably like 14% moisture content, but that new timber, you need to give it a chance to dry before you close it all up. Now, the fourth tool is another one that I don't have. It's either at that job I was doing before lockdown started or at the container again. It is the end nippers, the Knipex end nippers in particular, or Nipex. Knipex? It's German, right? So it's Knipex. Knipex. K nip X. Knipex. They're end cutters and they're made for tying steel when you're doing concrete steel reinforcing. But what I use it for on renovations is pulling out nails when the crowbar won't do the job. They can grab the nail, even if the nail doesn't have a head, and lever the nail out of the timber. And it's also good for pulling out staples as well. That's pretty much what I use it for exclusively. Every now and then I tie steel, but mostly I use it for pulling out those hard to reach nails. Anyway, I should probably take this, uh, take this old boy home and uh, talk about the sponsor of this video. All right, the next tool is the multi-tool. But before we look at that, let's talk about today's sponsor. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you run your business online. And it's how we get our stuff across for our potential clients. They look me up, they click the website, and because Squarespace have helped us make a good one, they're more likely to send us a message about future work. Now Squarespace made that super easy for us because of their online galleries and portfolio yeah. templates. They've got automatic image scaling, so if you look at my website from your phone or your desktop, it, it, it all scales to fit. And you can connect all your social media accounts straight to your website. They also have heaps of resources to help you build your website, which is really helpful if you're a bit of a rookie in this area like, like we were. So the platform is easy to use and it looks good. And Squarespace offer a free trial so you have nothing to lose. Then once you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. I highly recommend Squarespace. Check it out in the description below. Now this multi-tool and that dog have something in common. The noise can be very disruptive. But of course the noise isn't the reason that I'm recommending a multi-tool as a underappreciated tool for renovation or maybe a misunderstood tool for renovations. I think most people use the reciprocating saw or at least they think of the reciprocating saw when they think of renovations because it's cuts through walls quickly you know, you can knock stuff down quite easily, but it's for those delicate cuts. That's where the multi-tool comes in. And all the different blades that you get with the multi-tool. We always have a blade like this in particular. This sort of half circle looking thing is great for cutting plasterboard. Let's say you're gonna take down half a wall. Maybe you're gonna put a door in, maybe you're, you know, creating an opening where you're going to extend the building out. We use this to get a nice clean vertical line. And then when you go to chuck in your plasterboard later on, you're butting up to a nice straight line rather than a ripped off jaggedy line. And of course the reciprocating saw. This is great too for the more rough stuff. This will get you through walls and, and cut out big sections a lot quicker than the multi-tool. Multi-tool is for accuracy. And one of the all important tools to renovations that I think too many people overlook is the vacuum cleaner. We use a vacuum cleaner all day, every day for many different things, including the multi-tool. So obviously vacuum cleaner, clean up the mess that you've made after a long day of work, but the other way of looking at the vacuum cleaner is it's a great way to get dust at the source. Hook this up to it so you don't have dust everywhere in the first place. Yeah. 
Even if you're a homeowner, rid of any your own house, this will just make your life easier. And also another way of looking at it is, uh, is it's about dust suppression. The classic thing to do on a building site at the end of the day is sweep with a big broom. And we still do that, but the problem with doing that in confined spaces is all you're doing is kicking up the dust into the air, and that's all stuff you're breathing in. So if you can vacuum it up, so yeah, vacuums, hugely important. Now the last tool, the last tool on this list, is the pumpy wedgie pump thing. These, the air wedges, inflatable air wedges. You put that into a gap, and you do what I'm doing right now, and it can lift up to 140 kgs. But let's say you're putting a window in, and you want to straighten that window up, put your level on the window, have a look at the bubble, put that on the side, pump it up. Once you're happy with it, put a wedge in, and I mainly use it for hanging doors. It's great where you have a pre-hung door where you need to lift the door leaf up in order to straighten and make it plump. You slide that under the door, you put your foot on the pump, you push it up and down, and once you're happy with it, you can screw the door in place. They work great, so if you're looking for a particular brand, I can vouch for this one. And um, yeah, I think these are great for renovations. Seven tools that I think are a little bit underrated when it comes to renovations. One of the tools that I was going to put on this list, but I just put outside of it, was a table saw. I actually went years without having a table saw, strangely enough, even though I'm a carpenter. But as soon as I did, and while I was using it for renovations, I realized how critical it was. Gonna be alright? Looks pretty good. Yeah, that'll work. Sweet. I'll check a link in the description for my DIY tools video where I go into like, you know, where you start, like get a handsaw, get a drill, and a table saw's on that list, but it kind of gives it context of where it is on the list, if you will. I was gonna put respirator on the list, but again, I've done a video about safety stuff. I'll put that below as well. Respirator is hugely important, uh, especially if you're scraping off that lead paint and things like that, or if you're cutting fine particle dust like plasterboard, you gotta have the necessary safety equipment. But yeah, lockdown Scott Brown continues. Uh, it's probably another couple weeks by the time you watch this. Um, and then maybe I can go back to work, we'll see. But uh, thanks for watching, thanks for um, supporting me in the meantime. Uh, and I'll see you in the next exciting episode. One more thing before you go. Merchandise is available. Smoker Time merch and, but can you hang a door merch? which you would have seen me wearing throughout this video. There's a few different designs that Jess has done. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. And if you don't know the story of But Can You Hang A Door, it's basically my uncle Sandy in Edinburgh, and we'd drive around, you know, hanging doors and driving around in his van. And there's a lot of flash cars in Edinburgh. So we'd be driving down the road and he'd look at people and be like, hi oh, Scott, he might have a Bentley, but can he hang a door? And that's where that comes from. So if you want to check that out, link in the description below. Thanks for watching.